China Finance, the infrastructure projects, as well as projects each for physically designed and physically transport. It is also a uh, kind of a preparation for the uh, visit of President uh, Xi Jinping uh, in November of this year. So most of the paperwork has to be done before then, so there will be lots of documents to be signed. Now for today's edition of Breakfast with them, I will focus on two things. First, on the projects finance and science government, and second, on the 2019 budget of the Department of Education, which happens to be the biggest chunk in the 2019 and all budgets submitted as well. The Chinese government is one of our development partners in ensuring the success of the Deal 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 program. Now, the first set of projects to be financed by China include the Chico River Pump Irrigation Project, the Blue Centennial Water Source Kaliwa Dam Project. Now, to show you the importance of that, that will provide uh, water security for the whole of Metro Manila plus the adjoining uh, provinces. The PNR South Long Wall Project, this is the project from Kalamba to Matocha Suwan, and there's a, uh, a, a separate line from Kalamba to Kalamba's. Now we have the two Pinondo to Tugulus and Australia and the Leon Bridges construction projects. Now these two projects have already been started, and it's those two bridges will be given to us by China gratis. It's a grant. Okay? It's worth about six billion pesos. Meanwhile, in the second set of projects include the Sea Philippines Project Phase 1, the Subic Clark Railway Project, the construction of five bridges across the Pasig Marikina River and Magahan Flyway and a number of uh, river control projects the Ambal Siluai River and Rio Grande and Mindanao River flood control projects among other projects to be finalized by both parties. We also discussed about uh, Chinese Thomas Industrial Park in Clark and also uh, China for financing a low renewable bond for the uh, rehabilitation of the, uh, the power plant in Mindanao, which is at the moment uh, operating at 40% capacity. Okay. Uh, this is the best time to upgrade the facility because Mindanao and the whole country has an excess supply of power. Now, given this, we assure everyone that the government is exercising due diligence in processing the approval of these projects up to the implementation of the initial phases. Now, yesterday, following the scrutiny by the House Committee on Appropriations, Congress has restored the hearings on the budget. That man said, and there's now pressure on agencies that we price the full utilization of its 2019 national expenditure program allowing 529 billion during the consumption of budget hearings in Congress. In cost-based terms, they have budget increased by 4.5% from 470 billion in 2018. And the budget for 2019 is, as I said, 129 billion. However, we know the extremely low disbursement rate for basic education facilities. This is the this classrooms, the building of classrooms. And this is an annual budget, annual line item budget of DEFCAD for its school building program. As you, as you can see there, the difference between the red bar and uh, the blue bar. The blue bar is the appropriation, the red bar is the uh, obligation, right? And a gray bar is the utilization, this worst set. So as you can see, it's hardly moving. Okay? For the last 
several years. So the disbursement rate for the, the, the basic education facilities fund, which is for school buildings, averaged at 12.8% from 2015 to 2017. Nothing for 2018, and of course not for 2019. So you may refer to the present needs provided from more thorough discussion. I have a page to here. Okay. Uh, let me comment on the, uh, the part of the we already made a compromise. In fact, indeed, we, we met yesterday with the House leaders, namely um, Ataya and uh, Carlo Magales, and we agreed that we will uh, have a transitory uh, cast based program. In other words, after the cast based program, there will be a 15 month period, right? One, one per year, that's an extended payment period of three months. And we decided that we will extend the payment period for another three months. So this is one year, uh, one year plus six, so that's 18 months, but only for the following items, right? So the, if you, if you know the budget, if you can divide that, the budget into three major components. One is the PS, salaries and wages, and then the other component is the MOE, maintenance and other operating expenses, and the third item would be capital items. Right? So for the PS, it will strictly be cash based. will end in December an extended period of three months for payment. Now for MOE, the same thing, like the payment of power, general, you we cannot you consume it during the year and you are given three months to settle your bill. Like power, the water, you get a bill middle of December, you get paid in January up to the end of months. Now for capital outlays. You, you can because next year is an election year, so there will be a uh, there will be an election ban. So we figure out that maybe there will be some delays. So we agree that we will allow up to the end of June for payment of projects. Remember this under capital outlays there are two sub components. One will be equipment and another one for projects. So for projects, we agree that we will extend it to end of June for payment. Now for, for equipment, like if you want to buy computers or a car, etc., that has to be settled within the first three months of the year. Okay? So that's the extent of the, of the agreement. And there's talk of a supplemental budget. Okay? Now, a supplemental budget is a possibility, but not a certainty. As you know, it's difficult to pass, to mother, to initiate and pass a supplemental budget. Okay. A supplemental budget requires that the executive identifies the source of financing. So we cannot just submit a supplemental budget to Congress without telling them where we're going to get the source of funding, right? So in Congress, we agree to pass all our tax measures, okay, then there's a possibility. So that's, that's the requirement. We need the tax measures. Or, and the second problem with, with supplemental budget, by the way, is that you really have to have an overwhelming justification for it, like the eruption, the, the Mount Pinatubo eruption. We have a supplemental budget for that. We cannot just come, come and say, look, we want to increase the budget. There's got to be an overwhelming justification for us all the budget. So those two requirements. Uh, plus, uh, sorry, the, the overwhelming uh, justification, plus, of course, the source of financing has to be clear. It has to be identified. All right, uh, I'll, I'm ready to answer questions. Yes, sir. Sir, is the extension of the payment period uh, legal or uh, consistent with the Constitution? 
you know, the Constitution actually does not talk about caste quantity or contribution value. The Constitution simply says that the President shall submit to Congress a budget of expenditures and social finance, no qualifier. Okay? So, uh, actually, we're doing, we're, we're operating as if we are already in a caste budget right now. Okay? One year obligation and so forth. So, uh, I don't think that there are any uh, constitutional infirmity for this kind of okay. The only requirement, of course, the other requirement is that Congress may not increase that is in the Constitution. So, whatever we submit to Congress, Congress may not increase that. So, we submitted a seven, uh, one in five, five 3.7 trillion budget. Okay, Congress cannot increase that. Okay. It is like, like in the private sector, right? You have, you have the board, you have the CEO, the president CEO of the corporation, go to the board of directors, who is Congress, is Congress, and how the board of directors cannot tell the CEO that you need more money than what you're asking. Okay? It's a... Uh, so, why are you contemplating to have a supplemental budget as a test for 2019? The supplemental budget, what is that for? Uh, uh, there's going to be a supplemental budget. It has to be a supplemental budget for the 2018 budget. Okay, because the 2019 budget has not been passed yet, right? You cannot have a supplemental to a budget which has not been passed. Okay. Supplemental budget for this year as long as the tax packages are in. Are in link package 2. Package 2, one, no, no, 1A, 2, 3, and 4. This year? As long as they are approved, yes. And how much is the supplemental budget? We don't know yet, man. We don't know yet. Okay. But mostly this additional budget will be used for, for what purpose? Uh, we don't know yet. So, if that, that's not the right. There are, there are something uh, pressure for Congress to restore what we have done. Okay? And I'm going to show you where we have got. Okay? Um, it's going to go back to the education part. There. I got this, okay? Because it's not moving. Why throw good money out the back? So, sorry, because also the other one is in the HPEP, Health Facilities Program, right? That is also not moving. And there are many negative findings by the Commission of Audit. So why throw good money out the back? They have to justify it that they are implementing the project as, as a vision and that there are no unmarking the implementation of the project. With that the law disbursement and uh, you said you have yet to know what will be where we are going to use the supplemental budget. Why is that talking about the supplemental budget? If as I said, supplemental budget is a possibility, not a certainty. Okay? I'm, I'm not talking about supplemental but there are some things. Alright, thank you. Uh, just to be clear, Sir Terry, the, as a compromise, the congressman asked for a supplemental budget to pass the trade packages. They asked for money to pass the packages. No, there's, there's no compromise here. We will submit to the leadership of both of the partners in a, in a meeting by letter to be called by the president after probably after his trip to, uh, to Jordan and uh, where else is like Israel, right? We all very much will meet and we will present to them our legislative agenda. Okay. There's no, no commitment to a supplemental budget. You were saying, uh, Secretary, earlier that as a condition to a possible supplemental budget, you would need lawmakers to pass all of the trade packages. So, it's, in effect, it's not for, for the package of the trade. No, uh, absolutely, because we need funding, right? The Constitution is very clear. Uh, the treasurer has to certify sources of funding for 
the leaders of the record budget itself, you will identify those sources of funding. This may come from the uh, tax pressures. So who proposed the possible supplemental budget? The supplemental budget always originates from, from the executive. Always. All budget bills shall originate from the executive. It will be presented to Congress. Uh, just to be clear, Secretary, you're saying that you, you're offering to pass a supplemental budget to return some of the funds that you can in exchange for the passage of all of the train packages? No, no, no. Uh, let me make this very clear. There is no initiative on our part to have a supplemental budget. Okay? Uh, the the uh, congressman feel that because of the cuts that we made, in the 2019 budget that we, that we need to supplement the budget. Okay. So that's open for discussion. Okay. Uh, whether that will come from the cuts here, it's hard to justify, right? If, if you were running a corporation and some of your units are not doing well, why would you give them more money? Right? So it has to come from some, some, somewhere else. But the Senate are passing on these packages, tax packages, are very difficult. Do you agree? Well, we said it's difficult, but not impossible. Mm -hmm. But this is, this, is, this is the dumb part. Packages 2, part 3, 4, and 2, 3, and 4 are easier compared to package 1. Let's put it that way. Okay? And we were able to pass package 1. Imagine tax on cigarettes, tax on oil, tax on sugary products. Those are difficult stuff. Let's see. Chair on China, uh, when will the Philippine and Chinese government sign the uh, financing agreements for the remainder of the first basket of projects? Uh, some have already been signed, yes. okay. but the rest, I think they are reserving it for November, when the president comes here, President Xi Jinping. So during the during your meeting with their counterparts, they confirmed that uh, President Xi will be coming over to the Yes, that was, that was the plan. I think he will go to uh, to Papua New Guinea first for the deep meeting and then on his way back and he will pass by the Philippines. And I'm so sure everybody is now here to start the signing and we might even have some surprises. So what less of surprises. So what other agreements will likely be signed? Will that include uh, possible joint cooperation between the Philippines and China all the time? We did not talk about that, okay? But uh, I can tell you that we were uh, part of the team was uh, Alan Kaitan, the former secretary, and we had a meeting with uh, the, the foreign minister of China. So maybe, I don't know, that we did not discuss that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. This is Japan. Good morning, sir. Sir, going back to the budget. So, you compromised now with Congress in order for them to push with the hearing. Um, do you pretty much extension or there are other uh, compromise na, you know, uh, well, well, let's not call it a compromise. Did they suspend the hearing? You know, I they suspended it because they want the president, yeah, that would allow the president to, to, uh, to modify the party because the Constitution says that if Congress is in recess, the president is, may change the party of some products and it's an anti-immigration rule, right? That was the reason for, for the Congress suspension. Now they restored it before we even talk about it, okay? Um, so, sir, you're still sticking with the budget base and cash base, not obligation base. As I said, the Constitution does not talk of cash base or obligation base. We submitted a budget, uh, okay, 3.757. The role of Congress is to happen it, review it, review and pass, review and amend, or reject it, but it is not their power. They have the power to So, sir, in this, in this particular proposed budget, you're expecting that it could be a hybrid 
difficult and cold. Uh, the hybrid is very confusing. We use, use that for hybrid TPP, not hybrid budgeting, right? Hy what we did is we just extended the payment period from three months to six months. So it's like kind of a transitory uh, casting spot. Okay? Not hybrid. Okay? So we, for, for projects, we, we increased the payment period from three months, from January to, to March of next, 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 next year, January uh, to March of 2020, from, from that to January to June of 2020. So regarding the Chinese projects, uh, how many projects are we expecting to be signed during the visit and how much in total the first package, if ever? Oh, we don't know yet how many, because there are many roads still. In fact, uh, I did not announce some of the projects that are already on screen, like there's a plan to, to put a bridge from the Wall City to uh, Samad Island. So there's a, another long list of, I think, about the care projects that are undergoing to see this time this time. If it's completed soon enough, it might be included, so I'm not sure. But it's moving, it's moving fast, okay? Yes. Sure, what's your strategy for next year uh, to prevent underspending ahead of the election Monday? How do you plan to front load your infrastructure outlay before the public or is done? Correct. Uh, okay, the election plan says that you cannot start a project that's already done during the, the, the bond period, right? which is sometimes in March. Right? Now, if you have a project that has already been awarded and given a notice to proceed, that's not no longer covered by the bank. So this early, you can already do the pre-procurement activities. If you can see the president's budget, this early, okay, short of award. So meaning you can do, you can publish it, you can do the uh, uh, preliminary hearing, etc., and then you can go through the whole process. You can choose the contractor, but not award yet. So once the budget is approved, to January 1st or 2nd, sign the contract, and that's it. That's no longer covered by the bank. So everything, if everything is done uh, on time, uh, and I think there's, there's, there's a very slim possibility that it will be captured by the default within the bank period. And as you know, the first six months of the year, is, is, is the ideal time for construction. Okay. How will the public works plan uh, impact on the government's uh, spending program this year? And will there be a greater risk of underspending? Or is no, that being I don't think there will be a risk of underspending. As you know, our, our spending for public construction is is, is, yeah, is us, which is big, okay? In fact, in some, some quarters, 30%. So we, we don't see any slowdown as a result of election election ban because as I said, once the notice to proceed has been given, it's no longer covered by the ban. And everybody is aware of that. We've been trying to do this since this 2017. So we have a lot of practice. Okay? 2017, 2018. So if everybody is uh, doing their job, then we don't have any problem. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Sir, uh, do you want to report that the agreement with the Congress and the Pusat Hash is a transitory period of three years? That, okay, uh, we, we know that this is kind of a major reform. And in fact, in the field itself, we, we allow for a three-year transitory provision. Before it becomes perfect, I'm not sure. So it's already in the big budget modernization bill. Three years. And then, sir, regarding the settlement agreement with China, um, some are saying that there are many people who have been able to do the loan agreements. So, the purpose of loan agreements is that particular provisions of contract. And it's a sabi, um, China will decide on what company you will do the contract. Uh, that's not true. 
Okay, uh, and this we have adopted this modality, and uh, this which is uh, accepted by both Japan and China and all the other uh, countries that are going to give us grant. What we ask them is they will identify, they will get the best three contractors for a particular project. Okay? Not that they are choosing one. Give us three. That's better than being inundated by, you know, when we announced this China project, Japanese projects, hundreds of contractors from China came over. Okay? There's no way for us to vet this individual. Okay? So we ask them, you match your own three best contractors per project. So some are good in bridges, some are good in railway, some are good in roads, so they will do the, the betting. And from the three, we will choose. Okay? Of course, we will exercise due diligence, cross-check them with the Walmart, ADB, etc., see what the records are, etc., and, and, and choose using our procurement system. So how about you do sa NLT na po pwede po natin makuha if we decide na umalis po dito sa loan agreement? Meron po bang mention kung ano po yung po pwede natin maging NLT kung mag-decide ang Philippine government na mag-back out? What do you have in mind in particular? Yung po mga nagirmahan na natin yung loan agreement with China. Ang um, nagkaroon na yung agreement, yung mga norm sa so, uh, naayos na yun, okay? They, they, uh, they agree, okay? So, wala na yung problem. Hindi na tayo babaya, okay? They agree to just forget about it. How to the goodness of their heart. Okay? Hindi na tayo na nakawala, okay? But there are some projects na, because we distributed them, like for example, the Belgian project, which was entered into by Mrs. Hanoi, I think, and is continued by Pinoy, the Supreme Court ruled against us, and we are paying for that. Okay? We are paying for that. Because there's a court ruling. Okay? How about the person who had a lawyer that you have answered? I'm sure the lawyers know exactly what to do. I'm, there are no specific... Uh, I have no personal knowledge what's, what's, what's in the law agreement. Sir, I'm just curious, why is the Mindanao Railway project not included in the list? I thought China would be funding that. Uh, the Mindanao Railway project, I didn't bring my list. You see, it's there. They touched the double because I uh, would. It's, it's there, but not in the first and second basket. Okay? So, paano po yung promise ni Secretary Sujan? So, it's going to be done. It's going to be done. It's, uh, right now, we're doing the feasibility study. And uh, I think China is in fact eager to take on because originally it's a GAB general operations act, but China said they're willing to, to do it. So we're not expecting like the construction of that project to take place um, by next year or you can bet it will start next year because the president wants it finished before the end of the start. Sir, how could you assess the speed of the projects that are being partnered with China? Considering, I think, uh, there's only one loan agreement so far that has been in uh, two years into the... I don't want to compare countries, please. Next question. Considering general assessment. Please. I don't want to compare countries. Next question, please. please. Well, Secretary, would you characterize the cash-based uh, budget as anti-corruption? It is anti-corruption. It is, uh, it, uh, it is, uh, it speeds up the implementation of projects, which means the beneficiaries of the project, like the school children, in case of schools, the patients, the help, the, uh, they help, they get to appreciate the projects much faster. And it's easier to track. Imagine tracking three different budgets at any one time. It's very difficult. And in that sense, it is uh, anti corruption. So, Secretary, what does it say that there are so many lawmakers who oppose the cash based budget? I'll uh, ask them. Sir, and, 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 you know, the President is very strong on anti corruption. Okay? So, uh, 
you would insist on having a more efficient and faster uh, implementation of transactions. In fact, that's, that's his number, that's his first uh, instruction to the cabinet members from the escrow office. Spend your budget, spend it well, or lose it. And some of their employees are now losing it. And in fact, that was mentioned also me, you lose not, not only your budget, but lose your job. Just so I wanted to clarify, so, uh, because since you had some of the agency budgets for 2019, Congress wanted a supplemental budget for 2018, why this year, not for next year? The funding for the next year were cut, not the funding for this year. It doesn't matter whether it's this year or next year, because if it's supplemental budget for 2018, which we will release sometime, maybe uh, assuming we have won, so sometime in December, it will actually take effect next year. It really doesn't matter. But then why are they in a rush to, you know, let them, uh, let, let them do the tax reform measures first. Okay. So we have a basis for supplemental budget. So how could you fund that supplemental budget if the succeeding tax reforms, uh, package two, package three, package four, are uh, uh, actually envisioned to be revenue to uh, um, some, some, some that, the robot is revenue neutral is package 2, okay? Yeah, package 3 and 4 may not be revenue neutral. Because it requires, to say, for example, amnesty. Okay? So, uh, you can have plus property taxation to put, to, to, to generate some revenues. Okay. Other questions? Sure. Yes, one. Uh, Mr. Secretary, is it uh, the uh, acceptable to say that the lawmakers want more cash in exchange for passing the trade values? No, there's no quick pro quo here. We, we have the responsibility, we have our responsibility, we want to act like a team, executive, and let's see. You know, this is a, an opportunity for all of us to make a difference. I've seen this after 32 years. After the ETSA won, uh, very little has changed in this country. And this, this gives us an opportunity to, uh, uh, to really shine. You know? We are in a nice place right now. We could be in a nicer place if we all act together. So what issues are you still trying to resolve uh, with your Chinese counterparts before you proceed with the financing agreement for the unsigned? Projects. I don't know the sticky issues that still need to be fleshed out. No, I think uh, they are having problems with the idea of they themselves vetting the contractors. This is something new for them. Something new for them. And so uh, this is also something new for Japan. But Japan has actually uh, responded much quicker than them. Maybe there are too many contractors or in China, right? I guess the number of the betting, how do you choose three out of a thousand contractors? That could be a problem, right? So that's that that one's the main hurdle. To I me mean, that's the main hurdle. How are you how are you planning to go for well, they, they, we brought it up with them and they are they promise. Most of the uh, most of them, well, most of the projects, they will need the three best by September. September. So, we can get great anticipation whether they can deliver. So, how will it be at the rate of the Philippines if China chooses the top three? Or will it be, will, it, will the projects be expedited if we are the ones doing the No, 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 definitely not. Because we don't have a lot of time. We, we are we're doing a lot of things and we can't afford to talk to 100, 1,000 contractors coming here okay? and they clean them and you know, that's not our business. Plus, it, it focuses on the responsibility. So you can say, you identify these contractors, right? So, uh, rather than us. 
turbulence that's over a period for the big thing. Is it the big thing government? So we will choose from the three, three and we will use our procurement law. Enter in the in the beginning of the top three. What who said who sets the criteria for for the process? Yeah. Yeah. You cannot impose on them, right? Uh, so we just say you choose your three best. Best meaning uh, very generic. Okay? Biggest in terms of projects down the road. And then many of these uh, construction companies have done a lot, lots of projects and work. In, in billions of okay. And so once the three are vetted, the three will be will not be subjected to very big. Okay, we call it a short list of short list of contractors. We have asked them to give us a short list of contractors, three per project. Okay. And these are the they are not necessarily three for the whole time Chinese existence. It's three per project. Because some some are good in say in engineering design. Some are good in actual construction, right? And, so on. So, and the shortlist will now be subject to Philippine procurement rules. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sir, sure. 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 this is a reference to the rental budget since it's for 2018, but it will take effect by 2019. Yes. You're not time bound to finalize it within the year. You could iron it out by next so year. So you have to. Uh, Figure that out this year. If it's 2018, something like that, we cannot do it this year. So is there a timeline when you need to finalize it? Mm -hmm. Did you do it before the season the month? Uh, they are until the end of December to figure it out. Assuming they can be, as you know, they will have to find them. Most of them will find a certificate of candidacy sometime in October, right? So there's very little, little time to do everything. That's why we are in a hurry. We don't have the luxury of time. It's difficult to master a call after they have filed a candidacy. Can you imagine that, right? Uh, if you're running for an office, you're running for governor or city mayor or the elections, you better be out there rather than in the halls of Congress. And so it's more difficult. So what would qualify you know, strictly would you enforce you know, overwhelming justification but, um, justification to the rental budget? And it could be, uh, well, as I said, the monk and the right? uh, Or maybe, I don't know, they can come up with some, uh, we can... It's, it's, it's not just a simple deal. It has to have strong justification. Like there's flooding somewhere, etc. Like there's an Ubuntu incident again. So. Sir, regarding the coming days after the president's trip, what would be the main agenda of the meeting? Yeah, that could uh, be just to stress out the list of measures now pending in Congress. Some are already almost done what we call uh, low-lying fruits. We just need a few more uh, days to pass it. Like that. So we really want some really reform-oriented measures. Okay? Uh, I, I, I can give you that. If you, you can ask them that, call them up. Because we have a pre-year meeting. And they have a list of those projects, of those bills. If I remember right, about 20 bills. Questions? Yeah, what? I'm saying that the possible supplemental budget will be or should be prepared before the death. Is that correct? No, 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 no. It could be after that. It could be after. It could be after. That. That's too soon. That's too soon. Alright. Three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you.